This is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about odds and probability. Now, we've been talking about probabilities quite a bit, but sometimes you'll hear people talk about odds. And odds are in, in, they're very closely related to probabilities, and in some way it's sort of the same basic concept, but it's a different numerical way of representing this, this degree of uncertainty. So odds and probabilities are not exactly the same thing, but they're closely related. So probability is a part-to-whole relationship. So for a finite sample space, remember the probability of event is the size of that event divided by the size of the sample space. So the probability of getting a heads on a fair coin flip is 1 over 2, or 1 half, 0.550%. Sometimes instead we want a part-to-part -part ratio. For example, we might express the coin situation as 50 to 50 or which reduces as one to one, one tails for every one head on average. This part to part ratio is called odds. So probability and odds are two different ways of expressing the level of uncertainty. Um, okay, so the most common way that we talk about odds are odds against an event. So if they say what are the odds of event A or the odds against A, they're expressed as a ratio of the size of the complement of A to the size of A. The odds for that are the reciprocal event, uh, the, the size of A to the size of not A. So let's take the experiment, draw a random card from a standard deck of cards. And the event A is draw a spade. Compute the odds and probabilities before going to the next side. The odds against A, the odds for A, the probability of A, and the probability of the complement of A. Figure all those out. Press pause now. Well, the odds against A are the ways of not getting A to the ways of getting A. So there are 39 cards that are not spades, 13 spades. So it's 39 to 13. That reduces to 3 to 1. So there are three cards that are not spades for every one card that is a spade. The odds for A, which would be the less likely way of saying this, uh, would be the size of A to, uh, to the size of not A. So that would be 13 to 39 or 1 to 3. Again, it's one uh, spade for every three non-spades. The probability of A happening is the size of A divided by the size of the sample space. So that's 13 ways of getting a spade over the total 52. Notice one way to get the 52 is add the spades and the not spades together. Okay, so that's 13 50 seconds or one fourth. The probability of the complement of A then is 39 over 52 or three fourths. So notice that you can have both odds and probability here. But how can we convert from odds, say 3 to 1, to the probability 1 fourth? Or how can we go from 1 fourth back to 3 to 1? Well, it's actually a pretty simple con uh, process here. If we're given the odds against A, there's C to D. Then the probability of A is D divided by C plus D, and the probability of not A is C divided by C plus D. So for example, if the odds against A are 5 to 2, then uh, the probability of A is, the A part is the second part, so there's 2 for a total of, out of a 7. So that's 2 sevenths is the part to whole relationship, which is the probability of A. The probability of not A, the not A is the 5. So that's 5 over a total of 7, or 5 sevenths is the probability of the complement of A, which of course is 1 minus the 2 sevenths. So that's going from odds to probability. Okay, so if you're going to odds to probability, if you want to find the odds against uh, A are given, and you want to find the probability of A, you take the second number divided by the sum of the, of the two numbers. Now, if you're going the other direction, going from probability to odds against A, 
So if the, uh, the A is the probability of A is some, just num some number P, then the odds against A are 1 minus P uh, to P. So if the probability is 3 fifths, the odds against A are 1 minus 3 fifths, which is 2 fifths, to 3 fifths, and the fifths part cancel out, so you get 2 thirds. Or since this is given as a fraction, you can sort of shortcut the 5 this way. You could put the 3 as the second number, and then you do the bottom minus the top as the first number. Now remember, we have our fundamental equivalence property of fractions, and that is that n times a over n times b is the same fraction as a over b for as long as n is any real number except for 0. So we can multiply the numerator and denominator of a fraction by any non-zero real number, and we will obtain equivalent fraction. So for example, we can take 3 fifths and multiply by 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator and get 6 tenths. Or equivalently, we could go the other direction and reduce a fraction by factoring the 6 as 2 times 3, and the factoring the 10 is 2 times 5, and then essentially canceling out the common factor of 2. We can do the same thing for ratios. So typically we would we'll do uh, probabilities would be a fraction form. We typically use ratio form for um, odds. So we have an equivalence property of ratios to n times a to n times b is the same ratio as a to b. And again, this works for any n that's not 0. So we can multiply both parts of a ratio by any non-zero number and attain an equivalent ratio. So we could take 3 to 5, multiply both parts by 5, and that would become 15 to 25. Or equivalently, go the other way and reduce the ratio just like we reduce fractions. Take the 15, factor it as 3 times 5. Take the 25 and factor it as 5 times 5. And those 5s cancel to give us the ratio 3 to 5. Notice that the probability is always a number between 0 and 1, but the odds are not necessarily true. You could have the first number bigger than the second or the second number bigger than the first. We're told the odds of an, ev uh, odds of an event, in other words, the odds against the event, are 3 to 2. What's the probability that the event is happening? See if you can work this out on your own now. Press pause. Well, the probability of A, okay, is given this way. Well, the ratio, the odds are 3 to 2. That's the size of not A to the size of A. So the, the actual size of A is 3 times some number, and the size of, that's not A, and the size of A is 2 times the same number N. So the probability that A happens is the size of A over the size of the sample space. So that's the size of A over the size of A plus size of not A. That's 2N over 2N plus 3N. That's The N's can all cancel out. That's the same as just 2 over 2 plus 3. That's 2 fifths. Now, does that, that doesn't mean there's actually two things and five things. There could be 2N things and 5N things uh, in, in a finite situation here. But the probability would be still be 2 fifths. So the probability that A happens is 2 fifths. So what's sort of the shortcut? You take the 3 plus the 2 for the denominator and take the second number 2 for the numerator. So the 2 here and then the 3 plus 2 for the denominator. So that's 2 fifths or 0.4. Okay. Comparing odds and probability, another exercise. We're told the probability is 1 fourth. What are the odds against? So I think in the last one, what did we do? The last one we started with the odds against, and we found the probability. This is backwards. This one we have the probability, and we want to find the odds against. So that we know the probability is one-fourth. What are the odds against event A happening? Or we might just say, what are the, prob what's the, what are the odds of A? Meaning the probability the odds against A. Uh, you figure this out. Press pause now. Well, the probability of A is one-fourth. So that means it's one. The, the size of A is one times some number and the size of the sample space is four times the same number n. Okay, 
Well, this 4n is made up of the 1n plus the difference 3n for the complement. And so the size of the complement is 3n. The size of a is 1n. So it's 3n to 1n. The n's cancel is 3 to 1. Okay. Now what's the shortcut? Well, you just take the denominator minus the numerator. That's 4 minus 1 is 3 for your first number. And the numerator is your second number. So these two numbers add up to the denominator. And there you go. Pretty straightforward. All right, so here are some more exercises for you to try. Uh, the first three uh, were given the probabilities, and you have to find the odds of these events or odds against these events. In section B, three more exercises. This time we're given the odds, and you have to find the probability. Uh, you should be able to work all these out now. Uh, work them out. Come back when you're done. Press pause now. Okay, so here we go again. The odds against A here, you add the 2 and the 3. Uh, I mean, sorry, you should take the 3 minus the 2 is 1, and then the second number is the numerator 2. So basically two of the three ways are A. One of the three ways is not A, so it's not A to A, 1 to 2. Same way here, you do 7 minus 3 is 4, and the numerator is the, the second number, so it's 4, 3. The probability is 0.5. So it's 1 minus 0.45 to 0.45. So it's another way to do it if it's a decimal. You take 1 minus this, which is the probability of not a, not C, and then do it to the probability of C. So 1 minus 0.45 is 0.55 to 0.45. Usually we don't like decimals in the middle of our ratios. So multiply both of these by 100. You get 55 to 45. And in fact, we can cancel out a 5 now and get 11 to 9. So 11 to 9 would be a reduced uh, uh, odds. Going the other direction from odds to probability, 6 to 1, the probability of A then is 1 over 6 plus 1, so that's 1 7. The probability of B, the odds against B are 5 to 2, so the probability of B is the 2 over the 5 plus 2, so that's 2 sevenths. And the odds against C are 4 to 5, so the probability of C is 5 over 4 plus 5. Um, that's 5 ninths. Okay, that's correct at 5 ninths. All right, let's look at a little bit more here. What is meant in the following situations? What if the first number of the odds against the A ratio is the same as the second? What does that mean? What if the first number is larger than the second in the odds? What if the first number is smaller than the second? What does this mean? Think about that a minute and come back when you think you have an answer. Press pause now. Well, if the two numbers are the same, then the ratio of the odds are 1 to 1 or 50% to 50%. This indicates that the probability of the event is one half, 50%, and the event and its complement are equally likely. In other words, odds one to one means probability is a half. What if the first number of the odds ratio is larger than the second? Well, if the first number is larger, then the uh, it's more likely to not happen. So that means that the probability is less than a half. And so it's less likely for the event to happen than it is for not to not to happen. So an example of that would be uh, if the odds were 2 to 1, the probability would be 1 third. So it's less likely for that to happen than to happen. On the other hand, if the first number of the odds ratio is smaller than the second, then it's actually more likely to happen because the event is the probability of the event is more than a half. So for an example there, if the odds are 3 to 5, the probability is 5 eighths. Notice that's bigger than a half for the probability. Now, I need to talk about something else that you may talk about. And this is not really odds at all, but it's sometimes called odds. In gambling, payoff odds, and I put that in quotes on purpose, are not actually odds, but are rather a payoff ratio. So the way that works is if the payoff odds are 2 to 1, then a person placing a $1 bet will get their $1 bet back 
and will also receive two dollars in winnings. They'll win the win two dollars for every one dollar bet. Now, if the game were fair, the payoff odds would be the same as the actual odds against the event. However, casino games always, always have a house advantage which is why the house always wins more money than it loses in the long run. And so payoff odds are not the same as actual odds. So let's give you an example of that. Here's a picture of an American roulette wheel. Basically the way this works, you, this, this, you, they drop a ball in here and it spins around and around and around. Eventually it lands in one of these slots. And they have different numbers and colors on the slots. Uh, so let me make it easy here, and there's other bets involved, but let's just pretend for a minute there are only two basic bets. You can bet that it'll land in a black slot, or you can bet that it will land in a red slot. Now, there are actually the same amount of black slots and red slots. There are 18 red and 18 black. And the payoff odds on this bet are 1 to 1. And at first glance, this might seem fair because there's the same number of red as there is black, so that seems fair. But if you look a little bit closer, you see that not all of them are red or black. There are two green slots. There's a zero and a double zero right here that are green. Okay, so in fact, the total number of slots is not 18 plus 18, which is 36, but actually add the two green ones, that's 38. Okay, so what does a person win? Let's see if you can answer these questions. What does a person win if they bet 25 on black and win? How much money does the operator give them back? What's the probability of winning a bet on black? And what are the actual, actual odds against winning a bet on black? See if you can figure those out. Press pause now. Now, since the payoff odds are 1 to 1, they win $1 for each dollar bet. So, if they bet 25, they will win 25. Then they have to actually give them the $25 to the operator up front, or an equivalent amount of chips. And so, they will receive back their original bet, as well as a winnings, for a total of $50, probably in chips. The $25 they put in, and the $25 they win. So what's the probability of winning a bet on black? Well, it's not one half. It's a little less. There are 18 black slots of a total of 38 slots. So the probability of a black is 18 over 38, or 9 nineteenths, which is approximately 47.4%. A bit under 50%, which would be fair for a payout of 1.1. So that payout is not quite fair. What are the actual odds of winning a bet on black? against winning a bet on black, they're actually 20 to 18. There are 20 non-black slots, there are 18 black slots. That reduces to 10 to 9. That, that right there is why the house has an advantage. Because, think about it a minute, what basically happens here? Let's make it simple. Half the people bet red, half the people bet black. It doesn't matter. What happens if it lands on black? All the people who were made red lost their money, but then that money just goes to the people who bet the other color. Now, um, but what happens is two times out of every uh, 38 times it will land on green, and then the house takes everybody's money. And that's what they're counting on. They're counting on, on the red and black base, basically balancing each other out and then the green coming up every now and then. Now, now, there's other bets that you can make on a roulette wheel, but I'm just trying to simplify the basic concept a little bit here and just consider this basic bet. So you can see here that payoff odds are not true odds. They're just a payoff ratio, whereas the odds are the actual ratio of losing to winning.